this week on the show, we have Netflix Ginny and Georgia star Nikki Ramel. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of having a positive aura. Have you ever had someone walk into a room and command your attention because of their magnetic personality? Having a magnetic personality has nothing to do with your physical appearance or trying to be the center of attention. Rather, it's about the energy you bring into a room. When you are unapologetically yourself, your confidence shines bright and people are instantly attracted to your radiant energy. Similarly, when you walk into a room with positive vibes, people become drawn to your magnetic energy. Make it your mission today to make it a point to walk into any room you enter being unapologetically yourself and with positive radiant energy, whether it's going to your office meeting or simply meeting up with friends. When your aura is magnetic and filled with positivity, it has the ability to uplift everyone you meet. As Rochelle Mead quotes, why not see which is brighter, your aura or the sun? Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, how has it been working with the cast? I mean, the show has really taken off. It's one of the top trending shows on Netflix. So how has it been working with the cast and just seeing the show grow? It's been amazing because we're, we're all, I always say this, but we're like a little family and we're all very, very close. I thought at first, like being being a flashback actor, I'm, I'm in a different timeline. And I was just, I was very shocked and I was so new, so new to it in a sense, um, in a recurring role and, and just how inclusive everyone was and how, you know, we just all, we all genuinely care about each other. And it's so exciting, even more exciting because you get to watch your little family um, grow and, and, and watch them on screen, which was amazing. I'm, I'm super close with everyone and I'm just so proud. Like it's honestly, it's so exciting. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Nikki Rumel, who plays the teenage Georgia in the hit Netflix show, Ginny and Georgia. Nikki, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. This is very exciting. Well, thank you for being here. I'm a big fan of the show. I've been watching all of the seasons, so I'm excited to talk to you and about your character. But before we get into all of that, let's talk about when did you realize your passion for acting and what steps did you take to make it a reality? Absolutely. So I was very young when I realized that, you know, I was very, very passionate, especially being so young. Um, I think it was it was my cousin, my older cousin, who who wanted to get into acting just for fun and doing classes. I wanted to be exactly like her um, little cousin things. Um, <laughs> so I I just took lessons with her. I was so shy as a kid and it was just kind of my my escape from that, from like the social anxiety and and I fell in love and then when I was about 12, 13, I asked my parents and they they, they were like, we'll drive you to Toronto if you, um, you know, if you get yourself an agent because they didn't think I would do it. And then I was just emailing a bunch of agents and everything and sure enough, well, here we are. I love that. I like that you, you know, you had a passion and you made it a reality because so many people are afraid to take that leap. And you did, and it definitely paid off. <laughs> sure did, I absolutely did. And I'm it's a dream, so it's wonderful. Yeah, and before we get into your role with Ginny and Georgia, you also had other breakout roles in Designated Survivor and Holly Hobby. So how has it been to really see your career take off at such a young age? Really great, I'm, I'm so glad. There's always like, oh, I wish I started when I was younger, I wish I did, that. but there is, it's just kind of living in the moment and, and being super, super grateful. Um, it was definitely, Jenny and Georgia was definitely a big, a big jump from, cause I, I've done like one episode, uh, different projects, like one episode there, here and there. And it's been so wonderful and I'm so, so grateful for that because it really got me like the knowledge of the industry and just getting kind of started, which is wonderful. It's great. Mm -hmm. And you're great in the show, by the way. You play some pretty, oh, uh, you're you in want. some pretty serious situations. <laughs> it's very heavy, a lot of the scenes. Yeah, and for our viewers that don't know about Ginny and Georgia, which I'm sure everyone does know, tell us about your role and um, yeah, a little bit about your character. Yeah, so basically I play young Georgia, the younger version of Brienne, um, who is absolutely wonderful. And basically it's kind of like her past life and what, what made her how, how she is today. Younger Georgia is definitely more more vulnerable in a sense. And there's a lot of trauma that she, she goes through. Um, her life really is thrown for like through a loop. Um, 
especially when she when she has Ginny um, as a teenager. And and it's just that growth and, and realizing she has to sacrifice her whole life and everything she's ever known. And it ends up being the most beautiful, like rewarding experience, but at the same time, it's, it's gonna be a challenge and, and she sacrifices so much. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you go through a lot of trauma as Georgia, the teenage Georgia, you go through a lot of trauma and a lot of hardship. So was it difficult getting into character for this role? Because I feel like you're such a cheery person. And how did you prepare for it mentally? Um, mentally, it was just doing a lot of research. I think that was the most important thing. It was, it's a challenge, especially because it is such a heavy topic, a lot of the topics. And you really want to I really wanted to do it justice, obviously. And um, so it started out like watching Brienne. Um, I watched every project she's ever done from oh, short wow. film to like lead roles. And I really tried to pick up on her mannerisms, which I feel like we have a lot of similarities in that sense. Um, and then for that, it's just drawing on on some things you can relate to, different emotions you can relate to, and also um, from, from women in my own life and their own experiences. So it was very, it was definitely a challenge though, it was. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like they were spot on with the casting because you look a lot like Georgia, like a younger version. So I, I love that the casting was so on point. And how has it been working with the cast? I mean, the show has really taken off. It's one of the top trending shows on Netflix. So how has it been working with the cast and just seeing the show grow? It's been amazing because we're, we're all, I always say this, but we're like a little family and we're all very, very close. I thought at first, like, being being a flashback actor, I'm, I'm in a different timeline, and I was just I was very shocked, and I, I was so new so new to it in a sense, um, in a recurring role, and and just how inclusive everyone was, and how, you know, we just all we all genuinely care about each other, and it's so exciting, even more exciting because you get to watch your little family um, grow and, and and watch them on screen, which was amazing. I'm I'm super close with everyone, and I'm just so proud. Like it's honestly it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the cast is from Toronto or Toronto or Ontario or they're Canadian, which is amazing. So does it feel like a small piece of home having so many Canadian uh, casts? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Especially because you know I I watched Degrassi and I watched you know some some shows yeah. that were just like Canadian shows or Canadian based shows, and I think that is so it is so special to see you know where everyone is now, and and it's definitely very it gives that home vibe and that sense of like excitement because it's such a great community and and Toronto is wonderful for that so it's it's great and seeing seeing everyone around and and just having that that closeness is wonderful um getting to see everyone absolutely and on the show we like to talk about success but we also like to talk about obstacles in the career because I feel like that's what inspires people so what are some obstacles that you face when getting into the industry and how did you personally deal with that yeah, a lot of it is like the rejection. I'm sure yeah, you hear that yeah. a lot. Is is there's so so much rejection, and not letting it, not taking it to heart. Um, it's definitely and and sometimes you when you run into like when it's such a a big show and they have such a big reception, it's it, it is difficult. Um, there's definitely like social media can be a beautiful thing and a painful thing at the same time. Um, so there's definitely that, and and a lot of comparison between um, playing the younger version as well, mm -hmm. uh, between Brienne and I, and, and and looks and everything. So it's really hard on on mental health um, because it's so public. Uh, yeah, so that's basically like the the main the main concepts that are very difficult, and the it's very unpredictable, very unpredictable. But as long as you're passionate about it, you know you make it work, you, you make it happen some one way or another. Yeah, and speaking about mental health, with a, which I think is such an important topic, um, you know, recently we had Bell Let's Talk Day in Canada, um, and you talk a lot about about mental health on your social media. So let's talk about the importance of speaking about it for you, and if you ever struggled with any mental health in your life. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. I struggled a lot um, with numerous types of, of mental illness, and um, my main my main thing that really helped me was. Um, being in a great, great community, I met a lot of great people through through my healing process, um, and a lot of a lot of therapy. I actually had therapy just before this interview, um, yes. a group therapy, which was amazing, and mm -hmm. and just watching you know the process grow. I think being open about it at first, I, I I had to be open about it for certain reasons, and and now I just see the impact it's making, and I, yeah. I hear from from people just how you know they they feel less alone and. Yeah. 
I definitely feel that way as well. Like, I, I don't think people understand. Like, they may be, you know, grateful for opening, for having the conversation opened. And at the same time, like, I do too, because hearing their stories and their, like, is so inspirational to me as well. So it, it's a two way street. I, I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for talking about this because I think that this is a topic that's not talked about enough. So many mm -hmm. people go through mental health problems. I mean, I was just listening to the radio before I got here and I heard, you know, Sean Mendes had took some time off um, to focus on his mental health. And it's not just, you know, the normal average person, but it's also celebrities that have these issues. So I think it's important to talk about it. So as you said, people feel less alone, you know, so I, I, I think I commend you for talking about it and shedding light on it. And for someone that's, you know, maybe going through um, a tough period in their life right now, what would you say to uplift and inspire them? Um, I would definitely say one of my, I don't know if it's overused, but one of my favorite things I learned in treatment. And at first I was like, I was a little willful about it because I was like, oh, that's so cheesy. But now I'm, I truly understand it um, is like this too shall pass and just riding the wave because honestly, it, there are going to be better days, especially when it's very hard. It's getting through the moment and trying to find stuff to be hopeful about finding like your passions, for example, and things to look forward to. And then you'll get to a point. Um, that, you know, you, you won't have to find hope, you'll just have it. And I think that was one of the most beautiful experiences in my life and something that is, is honestly very achievable with time and, and healing and, and just keeping the conversation open and yeah. And what are some things that you do to work on your personal development? <laughs> oh yeah, so <laughs> I do a lot of, a lot of self care. I definitely, my time management skills I've been working on to, to make time for that. I, I definitely work on things I'm passionate about and just really, really working hard on, on therapy and, and committing to, to recovery in a lot of ways. I think, you know, that's helped me a lot and, and just being open-minded. Um, it's very, it's very easy to get down on yourself and mm -hmm. you got to learn to, to forgive yourself and kind of let go of the past in a sense. You can be proud of yourself. You can absolutely be proud of yourself for the growth you've made. And at the same time, you can't change the past. So that's something I've learned that I've really kind of, you know, that's helped me grow. Absolutely. And do you think it was easier to get into character as the teenage Georgia um, because you went through challenges and hardships yourself? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, I think the basis of, of acting for me, like how I find it is, is just channeling those emotions like really stripping it down in the sense that, you know, we've all felt angry, we've all felt sad, we've all felt hopeless or happy, you know, I should think of some happy emotions as well. We've yeah. all felt this vast variety of emotions and and really kind of channeling that to, to a different situation um, or, or relatable situations, I think, you know, did, did make it easier. It definitely did. Mm -hmm. And Nikki, what's the best advice someone ever gave you in your life that, you know, kind of like stuck with you that you, that you, you go back to? Yeah, it's, I think my, the one thing is um, self-acceptance is mm -hmm. definitely a big piece of advice because honestly, I was always looking for self-love and I, I thought I needed to be this, this perfectionist and this person that, you know, was ideal. And, and in reality, I just want to, I think the self-acceptance is so important and it, and it ties into acting as well. It's just like, just always put your best foot forward, work hard and, you know, it'll, it'll work out. You always have hope. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I got goosebumps when you said that because self-acceptance is such an important thing. It's like once you accept yourself and you really own who you are, life becomes different because you're not, you don't care what people think anymore, right? You step into this, you step into your authentic self. So I, I love that. I think that's, it's simple advice, but it's, it's powerful. So, so yeah, I like that. sometimes yeah. simple advice is honestly like <laughs> impacts in a, in a, a long way. Yeah. And Nikki, what else are you working on right now? What are your current projects? Okay, so I was recently offered a role um, in, a, in an indie film that films in LA Ooh. called Sarah. So I'm very excited about that. Hopefully we'll, we'll start shooting in LA soon. Um, and then from there, I'm just, I'm doing a lot of auditioning and, and learning and training. And I'm just so excited about the process. And I love learning. I love growing. And, and I think that's, that's super exciting. 
I love that. Nikki, thank you so much for being on the show today. Congratulations on all your success, you know, to go from, you know, a small time girl in, in, in Guelph to now being on the big screen. It, it's really amazing and inspiring. So keep up the amazing work and I can't wait to see what else is in store for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.